first of all uh, this is a webinar uh, which is organized by Proticness uh, conferences and uh, I have been nominated by D Life in for which I'm a premium member they have been nominated me to speak on this webinar so this is a sort of joint venture between both so let me just speak something about Proticness conferences Proticness conferences is an organization of well experienced event organizers they work on providing an efficient platform of scholars professors, business professionals, entrepreneurs to share their insights, advancements and challenges in the area of their expertise. They have so many conferences related to prime topic of 21st century scheduled in scheduled for 2021 and you can head on to their website for more information. One such conference which I'm keen on sharing is their Protectness Obesity and Diet Management Summit which is scheduled to be held in Bali, Indonesia on 15th and 16th March 2021. They'll be hosting a number of speakers who will be putting forth their research and experience in the field of obesity management. You can contact the program coordinator to know more about the event. The details will be shared post the webinar is complete. So uh, uh, this is about that was about protecting this. So uh, I am a premium member of D Life In, a paid member. So they have nominated me to speak on this topic. So what is D Life In? So D Life In is an online community where we share our experiences on low carb and also we keep helping others. It was founded in 2014 by uh, one Anup Singh, who is an IITR alumni. And he himself is a diabetic. More than 200 success stories are posted on weight loss, reversal of diabetes, PCOS, etc. More than 1250 low carb recipes are posted there. And they have now started recently a low carb diploma course also so in case anyone is keen they can also uh, do this so this is the uh, low carb diploma and certificate course it's from NAAC 8 accredited autonomous institute with a CPA status from UGC India so uh, let me introduce myself I am uh, Shashikan Dayangar all of you can call me Shashi so uh, regarding my background so I am a certified sports nutritionist from K11 Institute of uh, Fitness Sciences I am also a nutrition network advisor for Nox Foundation South Africa uh, I, additional certifications which I have is LCHF in Clinical Practice Nutrition Network South Africa, Professional Training in LCHF Ketogenic Nutrition and Treatment, again Nutrition Network. Some of the ongoing courses are Low Carb Nutrition Diploma from Daylife In, and another one is Advanced Ketogenic Nutrition from American Nutrition Association. So these are broadly my credentials on this subject. So first of all, conflict of interest. So uh, I, my, I declare that I don't have any conflict of interest. And as far as LCHF, ketogenic nutrition is a hobby for me, and there's absolutely no financial involved, uh, either from proteinness or from relaxing. So this is a free seminar for all. So uh, first of all, I compliment proteinness for choosing this subject uh, for their Bali, Indonesia. Obesity is now a glo global epidemic. In fact, why global epidemic? I will call it a pandemic. So this is the real pandemic which we have as of now. I'm sure that you will all agree. Now. This is the hot topic as of now, obesity meets COVID-19. In fact, most of the patients who have been admitted in ICCU with severity of COVID, they are all obese. Either they are all obese or what is called as lean obese. They all have excess body fat in them. In fact, 80% of the world's population are actually obese. They may appear obese or they carry a lot of body fat. So this is a sad fact and which we need to address very quickly. So what we'll discuss, what is LCHF ketogenic nutrition? See, I'll not call it a diet, I call it nutrition. And we'll also see the history, the, the likely causes of obesity, or the hypothesis of obesity, the macros, what are the good fats, proteins, and carbohydrates we can have, and safety of this particular nutrition, some data points, and weight loss cases from real life protein. And at the end, I will also give a take home message. Now this take home message is for all. So whether you want to follow, you are following uh, LCHF ketogenic or not, this is something which each one of us can immediately start doing in our home so that we attain a very healthy life. So what is LCHF ketogenic nutrition? It stands for low carbohydrate high fat, where we have the carbohydrates up to 100 grams. And ketogenic nutrition is something where we, you know, uh, reduce uh, carbohydrate to little uh, smaller extent 
maybe to 20 to 30 grams. And uh, this generates a lot of ketones in us, which can be used as a fuel in our body. It's a nutrition which lowers carbohydrate containing food and relies more on what is called as fatty protein foods with the addition of fibrous vegetables, nuts, seeds, and low sugar fruits. So here, fat is used as a primary fuel instead of glucose. Now, how it works? See, traditionally, you know, uh, from what uh, we eat, we eat a lot of carbohydrate loaded diet. So a lot of glucose is released and pancreas releases insulin, which now pushes it insulin, uh, the, this glucose inside the cells, and that is used as energy. Now, what happens is ketogenic diet. The glucose level falls, insulin level also falls, falls, and this will release our body fat, which will get converted to ketones at the liver, and hence we'll start using ketones. Now, question arises, you know, uh, human brain, uh, we use glucose. So what will happen to brain? Many of us may not know that uh, we are a hybrid machine. We can use ketone and we can use glucose both. So this is something which is not commonly known, but many of us know, those who follow this diet know. If glucose was only the sole energy system for brain, then I would have been dead. Uh, four or four years back, because I've been now following this diet for four and a half years. So let us say I would have been diet four and a half years back. Uh, was at glucose be the only source of uh, energy? However, we can also rely on keto. Now, foods to avoid and foods to take. First of all, we see you know all the uh, starchy based grains, pasta, starchy vegetables, sugar, and all the refined foods has to be knocked off or at least minimized to a great extent. And for to take all non-starchy vegetables, and for Indians, I've made it more Indian specific. We can have paneer, curds, eggs, meat, fish, chicken, and all the good fats. So this is how broadly, you know, uh, the, the, the keto food pyramid may look like. And you can see the bottom, all those we need to cut off. So, which are the best? See, the moment we say, you know, uh, cut off everything sweet, sugar. So, what sweetener do we use? Yes, we need some something sweet in life. So, there are some sweeteners uh, which are available, which are found to be very safe. One of them is stevia. One of them is xylitol. And uh, truvia may not be available in the country. That's okay. Erythritol. And we have also have monk fruit. Monk fruit would be a little costly. So, what we have is we can use stevia as well as erythritol, which is available in our country. And worst keto sweeteners would be those mentioned the right, you know, those commonly available, those uh, sucralose, uh, saccharin, or any of those. And we have to avoid all those sugar in all form, whether it is natural or whether it is synthetic. So there's maple syrup, brown sugar, agave, white sugar. Someone will ask whether coconut sugar is good. No, all type of sugar has to be avoided. So personally, I am very comfortable using stevia drop for the last four and a half years. The first thing that will come to our mind is it is not sustainable. And this is what we keep reading even in magazines and news, newspapers. Everyone says that it is not sustainable. It's not sustainable. Yes. So that's what we have. Either we have dal roti or uh, dal rice. See, we have the same thing for years together. Now let me question. Okay. Do we not get bored of it? Yes. But we don't get bored of it. But when we say, uh, eat only vegetable, eat only paneer, eat only uh, eggs or non-veg food, then we immediately we feel it is good. Why? So it's a matter of habit, and I'm sure once you start this, it's maybe a, a, a two, three, four months, we get used to it. And we're just eliminating those, out of this, maybe say a thali, we will just eliminate those grains and starchy vegetables, that's all. We can have rest of them. And we are also eliminating all those industrially processed food. I call them fake food, they're not food including all the cereals. Now, is it a fat diet? This is again a blaring headlines in most of the newspaper or the magazines. They will say it's a fat diet. So what is a fat diet? If you see the, uh, uh, the meaning in all the dictionary, it's something which is intense enthusiasm, and especially if it is short-lived and it's a craze. But I would, let me ask you that, uh, is it really short-lived? No, it's not a short. -lived. I'll tell you why. We'll go to the history of this low carbohydrate diet. 
humans for millions of years have been on you know a, a, a caveman diet which is essentially let us say uh, more of meat fish and maybe some 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 tubers and few vegetables and few fruits fruits were only seasonal however if you see the high carb diet has been here with us only for 30 years so you tell me which is fad is it what we are consuming for last 30 years or what we have been consuming for you no know, millions of years 50000 is truly i'll say it is millions of years so what is the history the earliest documented history is 1797 by dr john rollo uh, notes of a diabetic case so he had used carbohydrate restricted diet uh, in 1797 and this is the first or earliest documented case we have later on there were in a few more cases in 1900 1951 1957 1958 1960 1964 so these were all the documented cases and i'll come to uh, so, some more uh, cases the probably the most one of the most popular is the banting diet so uh, uh, this was uh, book was published somewhere in 1863 in fact uh banting was an undertaker who was obese uh, throughout his life and finally some doctor told him to follow this particular diet he followed it he lost a lot of pounds and then what he has done is he has written this letter called letter on corpulence and uh, he headed for the local medical association how the medical association just threw him out uh, telling that it is very unscientific and please don't come here again so he went back he continued and later on you know uh, uh, he got this published and it was such a hit you know it was it sold in thousands of it so there were many editions of it and many people have really benefited this is again one more case 1882 dr william epstein what he says is fatty foods are crucial because they increase satiety and so decrease fat accumulation avoid sugar sweets and potatoes limit bread and vegetable meat of every kind may be eaten as fatty meat special so william ostler now he was the father of modern medicine he has written a book called the principles and practice of medicine 1907 so he has taken a monograph from 1882 and he has mentioned fatty foods are very very crucial for resolving obesity diet for obesity 1951 by raymond green practice of endocrinology so he has again mentioned please avoid bread and everything made with flour avoid cereals including breakfast cereals milk pudding potatoes and other white food vegetables food containing sugar and all sweets we can eat as much as meat fish bird all vegetable eggs dried or fresh cheese fruits except banana and grapes so eat fat grow slim this is a book which was published in 1958 and by far very 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 popular it's sold in hundreds and thousands of it now one of the famous one we all know is the atkins diet published in 1972 so dr robert atkins was a cardiologist so as you can see you know uh, uh, we don't have any less variety there are a lot of variety which we can use we can use lot of our vegetables indians are used to lot of vegetables and uh, uh, see we can always do what is called as the indian jugaad so what about vegetarian how they will source protein food that i'll come to later so uh, any further information you want about uh, uh, the evidence behind this you can go to youtube and watch this channel uh, treatment of uh, choice in obesity the evidence behind low carbohydrate diet by robert atkins so he has given this lecture in usda which was a great nutrition debate back in 2000 